Let's take a trip down memory lane when the latest member of Infinity Watch uses his time powers to help Spider-Man erase a bad memory. Is it as good or exciting or as fun, at least, as Groundhog Day? No, not really, but we're going to talk about it anyway in our review of Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1 from Marvel Comics. See you in three. Well, you might be wondering to yourself, Groundhog Day, it's not February. No, it's not. It's July, and it's maybe the right time for an annual, but it was a strange time to have an annual that's all about Infinity Watch, which is what this issue is about. It's barely a Spider-Man comic, so just giving you fair warning, letting you know what's up ahead. This is a, an Infinity Watch comic with Spider-Man as the guest star or cameo star, if you will. Just to let you know before you spend your money. Genre author Derek Landy begins our tale of time streams shenanigans with Spider-Man swinging by the scene of an armored truck robbery in progress. At the same time, the location of the robbery is the same spot where Spider-Man witnessed a supervillain dying the day before, and he's pretty bummed about it. Now, we don't see the supervillain dying. It's only talked about briefly through Spidey's inner monologue, but you can tell he's upset and he keeps replaying the scene over and over in his mind, even though we never actually see the scene until much later. Spidey swings down to confront the robber, a powered individual who blips around to evade capture. There's some back and forth banter, very typical Spidey stuff. And through that uh, exchange, we learn that the robber's name is Hector and he calls himself Overtime. His power stems from the time stone embedded in his chest, which is a hallmark of members of the Infinity Watch, giving, giving him the ability to teleport to different moments in time. I know it seems pretty quick to interject some commentary, but it's, it's necessary at this point because when you pick this issue up, it is exceptionally jarring. Spidey's talking about the death of the supervillain who we never see. There's no setup. There's no, there is a preface page, but this preface page has nothing to do with Spidey or his situation or any of the background concerning Hector. It's a preface page that's solely devoted to giving readers a primer on Infinity Watch, which is a team that Hector will eventually join. So if you say, okay, let's, let's get into the story and an easy end, you get none of that. Landry just drops you right in stone cold. Hector uses a combination of time jumps and regular boxing moves to try and land a big old punch on Spidey's face, but he's not no match for Spidey's spider sense. He evades it with his uh, supernaturally strong and uh, acute reflexes. Spidey vents his frustration about dealing with the robber who died the day before during the fight with Hector. And Hector suddenly senses, oh, Spidey's upset about this death of this person who I've never heard of. And he decides that he's going to help Spidey out by jumping back in time 24 hours to prevent the death. Huh? What? <laughs> You might be wondering yourself, how did this guy with time powers who's robbing an armored car suddenly decide to be a hero? That's a good question. Landry doesn't really answer that question. You get almost whiplash. There's that jarring feeling again. You get whi whiplash from the suddenness by which Hector turns from committing a crime, or robbing this armored truck with uh, cash, to suddenly deciding, okay, I'm going to do a good deed to help out Spider-Man, who's the guy who's trying to capture me. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It comes out of nowhere, and it's a very, very hard left turn to kind of get from point A to point B. What follows is a Groundhog Day inspired series of time loops where Hector goes back in time by one day, tries to find some way to stop the villain from dying in an explosion, and he does it over the course of several iterations, each time trying to interact with Spider-Man to get information about why the villain exploded, how to fix it, how to help Spidey without realizing what's going on. The whole issue in ends with Hector helping Spidey stop the explosion, save the bad guy, and when they get back together in the current day in the current timeline, Spidey eventually ends up with giving Hector the great with great power great comes great responsibility speech. And a little bit later, Star and Quantum, who also held their own versions of the Infinity Stones, arrive because Hector from the future told them that's where he'd be to invite him to join Infinity Watch. Yep, that's it. That's it. That's the whole issue. There's a backup. We'll get to that in a minute. But technically speaking, even though it says Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number One. Spider-Man is only in, in it incidentally. This is really all about Hector, also known as Overtime, learning a valuable lesson about what he's supposed to do with his power through his encounter with Spider-Man. Is it worth the cover price? Uh, unless you're an Infinity Watch fan, probably not, because you're probably expecting a Spider-Man story and he's barely, he's in it, but he's sort of incidental. You could swap out Spider-Man with any other hero and you'd get the same effect. So Marvel and their infinite wisdom have justified the higher cover price even though it's a short issue with a backup and boy oh boy does this backup come out of nowhere and have no connection to anything if you're up on the current spider-man run we catch up with nick fury who wakes up from a dream about phil's colson now apparently he's been having these dreams about phil but every time he has the dream colson dies but this time it's different colson winds up 
living at the end of the stream, which Nick Fury takes as some kind of sign. Elsewhere, we catch up with uh, Nighthawk as he speaks with the recently re resurrected Phil Coulson in a cemetery. When did that happen? How did that happen? Why? Did, don't know anything about that. It appears to be connected to the Death Stone, and that stone has somehow resurrected Coulson, at least in one version of Earth in some version of the multiverse. Nighthawk questions Coulson about what he remembers, including his life as the president, which is, gives you a clue that he's from an alternate universe, and how he has a, formed a team of heroes on the on the version of Earth that Coulson, at least President Coulson, comes from, where this version of Nighthawk also comes from. From the preface page, we know that Nighthawk is on a mission to gather the Infinity Stones and somehow remake reality. He needs all the stones, including the Death Stone, which he has somehow come to believe is resident inside Coulson. Don't know how he figured that out. Don't know where that, how that happened or why, but that seems to be the story. And then the backup ends with Nighthawk attacking Coulson because he believes Coulson won't give up the Death Stone or won't do what not Nighthawk wants him to do, so he feels he has to attack him, I guess, to get the stone. It's really disjointed, jarring, and unclear. The risk of sounding ignorant. I have no idea what this backup is here or what's going on. You get the impression you need to be heavily invested in Infinity Watch and this version of Nighthawk to get the context to even understand what the preface page was trying to explain. Uh, this is the kind of backup where it it's inserted in here to justify a high, higher page count, which justifies a higher cover price but it really adds no value to the story. Plus the art by Sarah Pacelli is not the best. It's pretty subpar for Marvel standards. So you get a backup that doesn't really tell you anything that's very incomplete and jarring and strange. It comes out of nowhere and the art is not great. So overall, I think this entire issue, even with the backup is a miss. The final thoughts what we think about Amazing Spider-Man Annual number one from Marvel Comics. You get a jarring one and done story about the newest member to join Infinity Watch with an incidental appearance by Spider-Man. If you swap Spider-Man out for some other character, it actually changes nothing about the story. If you've been hankering to get a feel for Hector, whose hero name is Overtime, this is the annual for you. I mean, if you're super in Infinity Watch, this is the one you got to get. But for Spider-Man fans, if you've been looking for some kind of a big annual to kind of get you really in, excited for Spider-Man, especially now that we know that uh, Zeb Wells is rolling off the book later on this year, uh, you can skip this issue entirely and not miss a thing. Therefore, we're going to give Amazing Spider-Man Annual number one from Marvel Comics a five out of ten. Just, this is just not, not good. I mean, it barely has anything to do with Spider-Man. Even the backup has nothing to do with Spider-Man. And the backup art is subpar, and the main story is jarring and poorly constructed at best. What do you think? Are, do you, are you really super into Infinity Watch? If you are, give us a thumbs up. If you're not, leave a comment Tell us and let us know why you're not. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining, and please stay tuned through the outro for the next review.